Okay. Um, today we are going to summarize on the angiographic views of the left coronary system. We will also discuss a couple of new um, images that you might need to know and some more teaching points before we move on to the right coronary system. So with that, I would ask, I would like you to look at the picture one here at four o'clock. Here we are looking at a view and in order for us to understand and recognize a view as we talked about before, we look at the catheter. The catheter is coming below the diaphragm. So probably a femoral axis and you can see the catheter being open as of an L-shaped. So it's probably an LAO view. And since you don't see the diaphragm in the middle of the image, so it's probably a caudal view. So LAO caudal view, exactly the view that is shown in this picture here. So with that, we move on to the coronaries. This view is good for looking at the left main, the ostium of the left main, the bifurcation or the trifurcation of the left main into LED, ramus, and left circumflex. You can really see the ostium of LED, left circumflex, and in this case, the ramus intermediate. You can also see the proximal segments of the great arteries, mostly the LED and the left circumflex. One thing, one thing that makes it a very good view is that it separates the big arteries, mainly the LED and left circumflex, very clearly. So if you look at this picture here, you see the left circumflex going in a six o'clock position and the LED going probably at 12 o'clock position. So if you are an interventional cardiologist and you are placing a coronary wire and you have to either go into the LED or the left circumflex, by far this is the best view where you can clearly see the bifurcation or the trifurcation and then once you move your wire into the LED or the left circumflex depending on which intervention you are doing then you can move your II to other views to place the coronary wire distally. From the coronaries we know this is a good view to look at the proximal portion of the left main left circumflex LED. Not a very good view to look at the distal vessels, distal branching vessels as they will be overlapped, foreshortened, but nevertheless a very good view to look at the proximal segment. This view is also known as the spider view. So with that we move on to some other structures that you might be able to see in this view for that i would like you to look in the center of the the screen here if you look at this quadrant a you know that while you are taking the lao caudal view your x-ray source is in the rao cranial position and if you are very meticulous about the nomenclature it's probably an RPO cranial view. RPO means right posterior oblique. As we know, as an image intensifier is anteriorly, but the X ray source is below the table or posteriorly. So if the X ray source and the X ray beam is coming down, So first it will come across the heart, exactly what we see in this image. Then it will cross the spine, so the spine will be on the right side. And last, 
but not the least it will come across the diaphragm and you see the diaphragm in the right lower portion of this image so this is all about the lao caudal view now we move on to the picture two here again just an exercise to recognize the image you look at the catheter here shown in blue is coming below the diaphragm so probably a femoral axis it's a jl or jetkins left catheter and here if you look at the catheter it's kind of folded on itself it's retracted so it's probably an rao view and again since you see the diaphragm just in the corner not in the middle of the screen so it's probably a caudal view so exactly the view the rao caudal view that we will be discussing this view not a very good view for the proximal portion of the vessels because there will be some overlap but nevertheless the distal portion the mid portion proximal portion of the vessels in this case the left circumflex is nicely laid out you can see the om branches and you can follow the left circumflex distally and see the branching vessel again caudal views are good for the circumflex so the artery that will be in the middle of the picture very obvious in the angiographic view will be your left circumflex as shown here going down around like five o'clock position you can also see the proximal segment of the led which will be probably going in two or two o'clock or three o'clock position but if you follow the led distally there might be some foreshortening and some overlap between either a high om or a ramus with the led so with that we move on again to the center of the screen here and i want you to look at the quadrant b here again this is your x-ray source x-ray beam is coming down as it enters the patient it comes across the heart so exactly you see the heart border first then it comes across the spine of the patient the spine will be on the left of the screen depending depending on how much of the angulation is there and then it's gonna cross the diaphragm so you might see the diaphragm either in the lower corner of the of the image that you will be taking so having discussed the caudal views which we know are very good for looking at the left circumflex we move on to to the picture six here at six o'clock position and this is a new view and in this case is an ap caudal view so the way i remember the ap caudal view is it is a hybrid between the rao caudal and the lao caudal view in itself it's not a standard view but we know that everybody is different the coronary anatomy might be different patient's heart might be rotated so a view the lao caudal view in some patients might not be good enough to open up the left main if their heart is pointing anteriorly so then the ap caudal view might be your lao caudal view but again once you get your standard views lao caudal and rao caudal view you can decide if you want to take an ap caudal view to kind of separate the vessels which were not obvious in your standard views here if you look at the catheter in a ap caudal view it's kind of in between with the l or rao view it's not fully open but at the same time it's not folded on itself again 
since it's a caudal view you still will have the left circumflex occupying the most prominent portion in the image and the LED depending on again the anatomy of the patient the direction of the beam as well as the orientation of the heart the coronary arteries might be laid out nicely the diaphragm in this case might be in the lower portion or maybe in the center so with that we move on to the picture three here at 10 o'clock position so again in order to recognize this image we go back to our mental exercise we look at the catheter here the catheter is coming below the diaphragm so probably a femoral access and if you see the catheter it's kind of folded on itself or retracted so it's probably an RAO view and the next thing you want to look at is the diaphragm and you see the diaphragm kind of in the center of the image so it's probably a cranial view exactly the view that I have labeled here so the RAO cranial view again the cranial views are good for the LED as we discussed the caudal views are good for the circumflex the cranial views are good for the LED you will see your LED kind of coming down nicely right around like five o'clock position you can see the proximal portion of the LED you can see the septal perforators I'm just putting small arrows here and the diagonal branches not a very good view to look at the ostium of the LED or the very proximal portion of the LED because there will be some overlap not a very good view for the left circumflex or ramus intermedius because these arteries will be foreshortened and overlapped but nevertheless if you are looking at a stenosis which might be eccentric this might help you determine how much of, of the blockage is there in the other arteries again we move on to the center of the screen here and probably like five o'clock and I want you to look at the quadrant C here so here you have the x-ray source and the beam is coming from below now as the beam will come below the patient it's going to enter the diaphragm first so you see the diaphragm in the center of the image and then it will come across the heart and you see the heart shadow and then it will pass the spine of the patient so the spine will be on the left side of your screen so with that we move on to another cranial view again for our mental exercise we look at the catheter here it's a JL catheter catheter coming below the diaphragm so a femoral axis and if you look at the catheter itself in picture 4 here the catheter is open like an L so it's probably an LAO view and since you see the diaphragm in the middle of the screen or the middle of the image so probably a cranial view so exactly as it is labeled here we're talking about the LAO cranial view so the LAO cranial view again since it's a cranial view is good for the LED and the artery that you will see in the middle of the screen very obvious going in this case right around like seven o'clock or six o'clock position will be your LED this view is good for LED plus the diagonal branches especially the ostium of the diagram diagonal branches so if you want to look at the the ostium of the diagonal branches you can see the stenosis there or you can see the origin of the diagonal branches again you can still focus 
on the left circumflex and the ramus intermedius but again they will be foreshortened and there might be some overlap not a very good view to look at the left main or the proximal portion of the circumflex ramus intermedius or the ostium of the LED with this again we move on to the center of the screen here and looking at the quadrant D here so the x-rays coming below the patient and going up and as it goes up it's going to come across the diaphragm so you see the diaphragm in the middle of this image and then it will enter the heart so you will see a heart shadow and then it will come across the spine of the patient so the spine of the patient will be probably on the right side depending on the patient's body habitus so with that we move on to another hybrid view which we have not covered so far is your ap cranial view again as we talked about the ap caudal view ap cranial view is a hybrid between the rao cranial and lao cranial view again since it's a cranial view so you might you will be able to see the led very clearly but depending on the patient's body habitus the orientation of the heart your standard lao cranial view or rao cranial views might not be able to open up the arteries so you might go to your ap cranial view as a tie breaker for example if you have you are seeing a lot of overlap in the proximal LED and you want to separate it from the left circumflex of the ramus and your standard views are not helping you, you can go to the AP cranial view. Again, the diaphragm will be in the middle of the screen. So kind of a sign that it is a cranial view. The catheter will be midway between the LAO and the RAO so it might not be opened up nicely but it's not as much folded as in the RAO cranial view. So with that we move on to the last couple of views or the positions of the II that might be helpful. So with that we move on to the picture 7 here at nine o'clock position so this is sometime a view a working view what we call like a straight rao view this is a good view if you are trying to do an lv gram and you want to see the interior the inferior the basal segment of the myocardium as the heart will be boot shaped and not foreshortened as it might be in the LAO view. So a good view for doing an LV gram. And you might also see if the patient's got mitral regurgitation, you might see the dye going back into the atria. So a very good view to look at the wall motion as well as the mitral regurgitation. Again, we have covered this in the previous talk. This is a good view to crossing the aortic valve as the coronary arteries will be anterior and posterior your catheter will be facing right or left and when you are pushing your wire there is a very small chance that you might go into the coronary so a very safe view for crossing the aortic valve so with that we move on to the last view and that is at three o'clock picture eight as i have labeled we all know the straight lao view is good for your engagement of the coronaries and this is a, by far the default view when you are engaging the left or the right coronary artery another thing is this view is also good for looking in some cases patients who have cabbage and you want to look at the 
lima to LED anastomosis. So if you look at here, below this picture 8, I have drawn a patient who is lying on the table. And if you are questioning in a patient who had a cabbage, that they might have a disease at the lima and LED anastomosis, you can ask the patient's patient to raise their arm so they can raise their arm up onto their head and then you can move your II onto the left side. Instead of the left anterior oblique, you go with a straight LAO to a point that your x-ray source is on the right side. Not a routine view that we do, but once in a while we might need that view. So with that, when you do a image, the x-ray beam going directly from the right side of the patient chest, moving on to the left and then to the image intensifier. So this might open up the lima to LED anastomosis in some patients. So I hope this was helpful. In the next talk, we will move on discussing the right coronary system. So this concludes our detailed discussion about the left coronary system and the angiographic views. Have a good day. Thank you.